Proposition 19 would make uh, several changes to the way that property taxes are applied to properties uh, that have just gone through a property transaction. Um, under California's current rules for taxing property, uh, most of the time when a property changes hands, its property tax bill increases. This means that the new owner uh, of a property typically ends up paying a higher property tax bill than the prior owner. And it also means uh, that if a current homeowner moves, uh, they end up paying a higher property tax bill for their new home uh, than their old home. Past voter measures have created two key exceptions to this rule. Uh, the first is for homeowners who are over 55 or severely disabled or whose property has been impacted by a natural disaster or contamination. Um, these homeowners can move uh, to a new home of equal or lesser value within the same county and keep their current property tax bill. Uh, they can also move to a limited number of other counties where local elected officials have voted to participate in this program. Uh, the second exception is for properties that are transferred between parents and children or grandparents and grandchildren uh, if the grandchild's parents are deceased. This exception applies without limitation to a parent or grandparent's primary home, uh, as well as a limited amount of property use for other pur purposes such as rental property or businesses. Proposition 19 would make changes to both of the exceptions that I just uh, mentioned. First, Prop 19 would broaden in a few ways the uh, exception for homeowners who are over 55, severely disabled, or who have been impacted by a natural disaster. Uh, first, it would allow eligible homeowners to move to a home that is more expensive than their current home while maintaining a somewhat lower tax bill. Second, it would allow moves to any county in the state instead of the limited number of ones that uh, have voted to participate under current law. And finally, it would increase the number of times a homeowner can make use of this exception from uh, once in a lifetime to three times. Conversely, Prop 19 would narrow the exception for inherited properties. Specifically, it limits the exception to include only inherited properties that will be used by the child as a primary residence or a farm. Uh, the measure also places a limit on the amount of tax savings that can be received for higher value inherited properties. The two main components of Prop 19 would have offsetting effects on property tax collections for local governments. Uh, narrowing the inheritance rules would increase property tax revenues, while broadening the exception for eligible homeowners uh, would decrease property tax revenues. But overall, uh, we think property, tax property taxes would increase. Uh, in the first few years after the measure, we think cities, counties, and special districts could gain tens of millions of dollars per year. Uh, and over time, we think these revenue gains could grow to a few hundred million dollars uh, per year. We also think schools uh, could receive similar property tax gains to those of cities, counties, and special districts. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to take any questions. Great. Okay, so this one was put on um, the ballot by the state, legis or the state legislature, um, passed it in June. Uh, the Democratic Party is in favor and the Libertarian Peace and Freedom parties are opposed. The Republican Party did not take a position on this one. We have endorsements by um, business organizations, labor organizations, the governor, um, the state treasurer and controller. And then the opposition is the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, the League of Women Voters, um, the Friends Committee on Legislation, among others. And then the newspaper that's pretty lopsided, just uh, the San Diego Union Tribune in favor and many others against. And the expenditures, we have realtors uh, on the yes side. So they, they must feel like they will um, sell more properties. Uh, the Democratic Party put some money in and some individuals. And then on the other side, we have the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. And then again, this is super lopsided with uh, the money on the in favor of its side. All right, so the questions on Prop 19. How do you define severely disabled? Uh, you know, I'm sorry, I don't have the precise definition in front of me. It's uh, there is one defined, there's an existing definition in statute that was actually created by prior voter measures. I don't have the specific definition in front of me. Does some of this money go to firefighters or firefighting? 
Uh, there, there is a, a provision that could potentially provide additional funding to firefighters. Um, uh, I guess kind of the short of it is that there's a bit of a complicated interaction between this measure and California's school financing laws. Uh, that interaction means uh, that I mentioned earlier that we think this measure could result in additional property taxes going to schools. Maybe that's a few hundred million dollars a year down the line. Um, the interaction with school finance laws means uh, we think in, uh, in most years, those property taxes mean uh, just additional funding to schools. Uh, but there is a possibility that in some years, those rules will dictate that that money in effect will instead result in funding being placed in a statewide fund that would go to, to provide funding to Cal Fire as well as the uh, local fire districts. Can you explain why the tax, um, the income from taxes to the state would go up with this measure? Because part of it sounds like it would be the other direction. Yeah, so um, there's a potential, um, If you, one of, the, one of the things that's taxes income are capital gains that you earn on the sale of a, a property. Um, and there is the potential because this measure would, uh, in effect, it would reduce um, some disincentives for, for certain people to uh, sell properties, um, that there could be an increase in property transactions. Some of those transactions might uh, result in uh, people taking uh, gains that could be taxed uh, as, as income. For the, uh. Okay. And is there any um, specific information about how long the home would need to be used as a primary residence by the child who inherited it? No. So those sorts of specifics aren't detailed in the measure. I think um, the kind of controlling rule is that the, the, there has to be a what's called a homeowner's exemption being claimed on the property, which is only supposed to be claimed if uh, the owner of the property is living there. Um, there isn't anything in the language of the measure that specifies anything, any details beyond that about how that would be implemented or checked. Um, those sorts of details with a lot of measures are usually left up to uh, statutes passed by the legislature after the fact or various rulemaking bodies uh, like the Board of Equalization or County Assessors. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to the next, next measure. Thank you.